right? bottle of glue and some big ass clamps all right couldn't get the 24 inch version of those all these little ones couldn't get the 24s of them so i had to buy the big ones oh dear these ones i'm going to be working off the stop on this end stop again but the second of the pins so that it's a bit further in gives me a fraction to clean off if i need to and these ones i'm going to work out where that one comes in then bring that one in and put one in the center so same there wherever it comes in one in the center i want them far enough in to be able to get me grooving that's why I made these 80 mil because I know from the past that 70, 75 mil you just you just too close to this groove. All right, so on the machine that is the second pin or the middle pin, that one, which I'll do for the bottoms. Like I say, it gives me a little bit of clearance, stops the bottom breaking out. And then this one is this first pin, this one. First cut with the pin against the edge. And then the pin up against there, which does this second cut. It's the same as the third pin. If I open that third pin and put it against there, it cuts in that position where that is. That'll be the top. Like that. And you see I've just got enough to get the groove on there but I can't really go off the pin there so there's no room for my groove there so I have to use that one which is maybe a fraction more in I prefer it maybe about there I don't know. I might make a spacer. Mark that. About there. Use a little spacer as my marking gauge. And just work to a pencil line. Put one in the middle. So I've just measured that. And that to the edge. It's about 30mm from there to there. So I've got this out of my junk pile, what I'll do is use that as my guide like that and I'll cut it to the length of the middle so what I can do on each one because I've got so many to do so what I'll do is mark that then I can sit it down flush with the edge of this and just put a pencil line so that's my centre line, so I've cut my block to that so I can sit it flush like that, just make a pencil line. Don't have to be exactly perfect because each of these are going to be individually marked and cut so they should marry up in the end. And I can sit it like that, make a little pencil line, same there. Work my way around. When I cut my dominoes, I'm going to cut them into the rail with a machine step without the adjustment. But then the ones on the rail, I'm going to move over to the adjustment one so that I've got a little bit of play on this rail so I can tap it up to my pencil marks. And I'm going to do the same at the bottom here, like that, and then like that. I'm going to start cutting dominoes. Normally I've got a jig like this, lives under there, where it's got bits of wood. But 
these are just way too long I can't I can't move them that far so got these bits of MDF they're smaller than this so they shouldn't interfere with the fence when it sits on top and I'm just going to screw them to these boards screw these boards down screw little bits of wood let's keep that one like that. so I can put the next doors together still but I've got something to work up against and these rails don't know yet right so these screws go straight through so they're holding everything down they go straight through into my table so what I've got now is I can still put my doors together and this it needs turning round but I've got something to work up to to do these that shoves up against there I do that one do that one do that one and then when I've done them I can sit this in there do the ends flip it around do the other ends the only difficult one is going to be this little one but if I have to I'll put a clamp on it so cutting dominoes now I just need to crack on making little jigs like this you feel like you're fannying around a little bit you know you really want to be getting on and cutting dominoes but in the long run it'll make my life a lot easier because I've got quite a lot to do I'll just be able to slot them on cut them move on to the next one
but I've enough of these sanded dominoes to put the whole thing together. So I'm just putting each joint together. You see how much play I've got. These ones that went in here, no adjustment on them, but the ones that went in got adjustment and these have been sanded down a bit so they're not tight. Done that one, done this one, done that one. I'll just check that one and crack on with the rest. And I'll do the same on every one. Just check that I've got it right. Right, they're all cut. I flew through them th in the end. The hardest bit was remembering which ones to put adjustment on and which ones weren't. But it was fairly simple in the end. That end one, no adjustment, then adjustment, adjustment, no adjustment. For the little one at the top because I was working off the pins and then no adjustment on all those so after the initial fannying around setting jigs up and everything I flew through them and that's the point in setting this up so easy the only thing that's slowed me down a little bit was it slowed me down for about 30 seconds the only thing I had to do was just take this Take this arm off the front here, and I haven't cleaned these ever since I got it. So I just gave them a wipe with a bit of acetone just to get rid of the build up of sawdust and stuff on it. It's just getting a bit bit sticky, especially when it got warm, so it gets red hot underneath there. And then gave it a wipe, gave it a bit of a polish with one of my cloths. I didn't put any wax on it, but there's loads of wax on the cloths, so I just buffed them up a little bit. And it slid quite easily. You don't want to put oil on. And if you do, you want to wipe all of it off. There'll be still some on the metal, but you want to wipe all of it off. Because if you use oil on your machine or anything, it'll just clump up with the sawdust. So you don't really want that. I avoid putting oil on the, on the windy thing on there. But I put a little bit of... WD on it sometimes just to ease it up a little bit but if you're not careful like I say sawdust will get on it, clump up and it'll be twice as worse right, grooves in these next right, I cut dominoes yesterday but overnight I just thought I'd better check all this so I've just cut a couple of pieces that are going to represent the styles and sat them in place like this and I've done it on all of them and they're correct so I can get on I've got to put a couple of extensions on my table just to help and I've set my cutter i put a little board on just to help break out but I know it won't do much good because this edge will lose its will lose its edge quite quickly but I've set my cutter so that just fits you don't want it too tight otherwise coming when you come to put the doors together it can be hard work I've cut this sample piece off the boards that I'm going to use and I avoid using the edges although this is MR this is Medi MR um, sometimes they, they do swell or they get knocked a little bit on the edges so I prefer to use like a, an in, inside of the board you know a nice clean cut That should fit nicely on there. Just need to de alter the depth a little bit. So I want it 10 mil. Well, I want it more like 12. And then when I work out the sizes of my panels, all I've got to do is add 10 mil.
Right, I'm glad that's done. You see that's about 11 12 mil and it's only just enough. Any closer than that I find that when you put the domino in it busts out this edge, the compression of the glue and everything. Right, I'm just measuring for the panels because I made these rebates about 11 12 mil deep. All I've got to do is add 20 mil to the width of this. So I measure the inside there, add 20 mil. And I made them 11, 12 mil deep, so I've just got a little bit of room, wiggle room, don't want them to be tight. And of course, I could just measure off the rails, I don't need to put a door together, but it's nice to do it like that. Better to see it. And so I've got 10 panels, didn't film it. All I did was cut the boards to approximate size outside with the track saw. Rip them down so I get them absolutely parallel and then square them off, come to length. Right, time to glue. Fill my glue pot. I'm going to sand the edges of these, just helps them go in the grooves a bit easier. Got a pot of water there to wipe off any excess glue. And I think I've got enough clamps. But I'm going to have to stack them and they only come to about there. So we'll see about that. I've got nowhere else to put them and they've got to be laid flat, so we'll see. Uh, that's the final two, the little ones. Just got to make sure everything's sitting down on the clamps and sitting on down on these packers so everything's parallel and it don't get twisted overnight. When they're dry tomorrow, I'll be able to stand them in here, fit them if I have to, cut any little bits off, plane them a bit. Right, those ones were glowing up for a couple of hours 
I got a bit impatient. They're all right. They're only held by this corner clamp. And these two look like they've done what I expected. Like I was saying, bent ones on the hinge side. So they should pull in. This one. sitting out of it so I'm not too pleased about that but that one's all right what I'll do is put a clamp on that corner and maybe put a packer on there and I might be able to twist it twist it to shape a little bit overnight Tomorrow I can start fitting the hinges. I didn't want to leave these on the bench because I do get a bit of condensation dripping sometimes. Anyway, hinges now.